often look back at the Disney movies we grew up watching with fond memories. But there are some creations we wish we could forget. Dance around the fire yelling, Happy Days are here again! You know, you have a point. If this is the real Li Shang, I don't like what I'm seeing. Welcome to WatchMojo.com, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 worst straight to DVD Disney sequels. I fear the Indians may wage war. Oh, my dear Pocahontas would never allow that. For this list, we'll be taking a look at those Disney sequels that didn't quite make the cut for a wide theatrical release, and with good reason. Birdwell's Raisins, property of Birdwell, do not touch except for Birdwell. Huh, I didn't think I would have seen that. Although we call them sequels, what we really mean is any movie released after the original, which can include prequels, midquels, and spin-offs. This is a very special necklace. I kept it hidden in a sock for three years! Number 10. Leroy and Stitch I shall name you... Leroy! <laughs> <laughs> what? It is a genius name! Following Stitch, the movie, and Lilo and Stitch 2, Stitch has a glitch. In addition to the TV spin-off series, you'd think that Disney would cool it with the Elvis-loving little blue alien. Aloha, gerbil boy. Instead, they gave us Leroy and Stitch wherein Jumba is forced by the main antagonists of the movie to create an evil twin of Stitch named Leroy to rival him. An army of Leroys threatens to take over the Earth, but luckily Jumba had installed an off command in the clones. To activate it, they just need to play Elvis. How convenient. Aloha, oh, aloha, oh. The movie itself wasn't unwatchable, just more of the same and entirely unnecessary. I didn't ask what you think! Number 9. The Fox and the Hound 2 No way! Look at the size of that thing. Or oh, is ugly. Midquels are the definition of sequels no one needed. They don't move the original story along nor do they act as exposition for anything that happened in the original. Come on, we're a team, right? Wanna shake on it? <laughs> shake on it. Midquels can be good if they serve a purpose, but it seems that the only purpose for this movie is to annoy us. Like a rhyme and a song, we all belong like a bird in a tree, we're meant to be like a nose and a tail and a horse and a trail. Todd and Copper were lovable characters. Until, in this installment, they're tempted to join up with a band of hillbilly, country-singing stray dogs. Just exactly why did you get us all together? Sure, it's nice to see more from the early years of the pair's unlikely friendship, but we could do without performances from the singing strays. You see, Todd, relationships and show business, they just don't mix. Oh, it starts out nice and friendly. Then they get that first taste of fame, and it's look out for number one. Reba McIntyre is a singing dog? Yes. Everything else? No, thank you. Copper, we were gonna have some more fun. Number eight, Kronk's new groove. Something's just not right here. After the success of The Emperor's New Groove, it's no wonder Disney thought a sequel would be a good idea. Who'd have thought, huh? <laughs> but they were so, so wrong. I've got a proposition. My eggs, your raisins. <gasps> We could bake beautiful bread together. The disappointing sequel stars supporting character Kronk, who, granted, was a laugh riot in the first movie. But even Patrick Warburton, who voiced Kronk, couldn't make up for the weak storyline and lack of sass and personality that Kuzco brought to the original. Emperor Kuzco here, coming at you live from the palace. Hail Kuzco! Currently sporting a rating of 0% on Rotten Tomatoes, this movie is less than groovy. And if anything, should convince Disney once and for all that if it ain't broke, don't make a sequel to it. So when you think of our brief time together here, don't cry for me, Argentina. Number 7. The Little Mermaid, Ariel's Beginning From that moment on, the king's heart stayed dark, and music was banned from Atlantica forever. This prequel tells the story about the time music was banned from Atlantica because it indirectly caused the death of Ariel's mother, Queen Athena. I may not remember much about my mother, but I know she wouldn't have wanted this. Considering the original often involved the red-headed mermaid bursting into song, it makes sense that the young Ariel would have a major problem with this. Don't get cute with me, this is serious. 
Where were you? I was just... listening to music in an underground club. It's meeting her future best friend Flounder that brings music back into her life. And by the end, King Triton decides to bring music back to the kingdom. There's nothing wrong with the story itself, but the music was what made the original so good in the first place. So honestly, was a prequel really necessary? Not really. And don't get us started on that shipwreck of a sequel about Ariel's offspring. Oh, Sebastian, I can't help it. I just love the sea! <laughs> Number 6. Lady and the Tramp 2. Scamp's Adventure. You have to obey certain rules. But I want to run wild and free like a real dog! <laughs> Did you see Lady and the Tramp and think, you know what would make this better? The exact same movie, but with their kids. Of course! If you did, then you're in luck, because that's exactly what happened. It's that obvious? Couldn't miss it if I tried. Disney decided to make a sequel nearly half a century after the fact, about Lady and Tramp's son, Scamp, falling in love with a pretty junkyard dog, complete with an homage to the famous spaghetti and meatball scene. I didn't know that I could Why did we need this movie? We didn't. Apparently, Disney just needed a few extra bucks in their pockets and figured audiences wouldn't pick up on the similarities between the two. Well, we did, and we're calling you out, Disney. But I made it! This is everything that I've ever dreamed of. Dreamed of what? This? Number five, Pocahontas 2, Journey to a New World. Welcome to London. The Native American Disney princess, based on the real life historical figure, is all about doing what's right for her people. So when her father, chief of the Powhatan tribe, refuses to go to England to negotiate a peace treaty, Pocahontas is quick to step up and take his place. My heart is pounding like a drum. I can't believe my eyes. In London, people seem to come in every shape and size. But when she finally arrives in the new world, she is bullied into acting civilized and is eventually rescued by John Smith. She doesn't even get to fight her own battles. It's John Smith! I thought he was dead! And the ghost of John Smith. Run for your life! <laughs> On top of being an unnecessary sequel, the film ultimately failed to showcase how badass Pocahontas is on her own, which is the biggest crime of them all. Do not forget this land. Number 4. Mulan 2 something wrong? The original Mulan was perfect in almost every way. So why didn't they just leave well enough alone? Yes, it was never clear whether Mulan and Shang would actually end up together, so it's nice to get that confirmation. But not at the cost of tainting the story we all know and love. Now this is a battlefield. Mushu tries to break Mulan and Shang up to keep his job, which doesn't even make sense. We're tricked into thinking Shang dies, spoiler alert, he doesn't, and Yao, Ling, and Qian Po marry the Emperor's three daughters. Seriously. Oh, and there's no one there to steal oh, my chair! And most importantly, although the voice actor who replaced Eddie Murphy did a decent job at imitating him, it just isn't the same Mushu without Murphy. Pretty boy is gonna look so bad it'll send Mulan running for the hills. Number three. The Hunchback of Notre Dame 2. Get out there, sweetie! I, I can't. Last time we saw Quasimodo, he'd finally been accepted as part of Parisian society, but nevertheless chose to continue acting as the official bell ringer of La Fidèle. Are, are you hiding from me? <laughs> no. What's so funny? Unfortunately for him, in this installment, a circus of crooks arrives in town intent on stealing the bell. This premise should have made for an entertaining and action-packed sequel, but whatever promise it had was overshadowed by bland characters and utterly forgettable songs. That golden bell, sweet La Fidel, will soon be ringing clear. The best of all the festivals, <laughs> Le Jour d'Amour is here. Jennifer Love Hewitt joins the cast as Madeleine, the love interest for the outcast but her appeal subsides somewhat when she runs away in horror the first time she sees Quasimodo's face. It's kind of hard to root for a romance that begins that way. I have to go. I'm sorry. Number two, Beauty and the Beast, Belle's Magical World. I 
will never apologize! If it wasn't good enough to be made into a television show, it probably wasn't good enough for film. That's the lesson we learn from this sequel, which is made up of four episodes of an unreleased TV series. You're having lunch with me! Am I? You are. I am not. <laughs> Perhaps the master might be a bit more gracious. Why should I? <laughs> this wasn't even the first sequel. A year earlier, a movie called The Enchanted Christmas was released, about how the Beast has banned the holiday from the castle. Forbid Christmas? No one can forbid Christmas! The stories here revolve around the Odd Couple and their animated household items. One of them is about how Belle and Beast can't even sit through a meal without getting into an argument. Isn't that terrible? Maybe if your happily ever after isn't quite so happy, we don't need to hear about it. What's keeping you? Uh, oh, yes. Uh, why, I forgot all about you. You forgot? Before we reveal our number one pick, here are some honorable, or in this case, dishonorable mentions. <laughs> Uh, hello? What do you think you're doing? Because ah! whatever it is, you sure ain't doing it too good. Ah! Oh no! The map! Got the map! With only half a map, we're, we're less than nowhere! After that map! Number one, Cinderella 2, Dreams Come True. This is a disaster. The original rags to riches fairy tale we all know and love was about a poor girl who finally got her happily ever after. This is not that story. What am I going to do? I'm a complete failure as a princess. Sure, at first we enjoy seeing Cinderella take on princess duties in her own unique way. But then things veer off course as we watch as Jack the Mouse gets turned into a human and one of the evil stepsisters, Anastasia, falls in love with a lowly baker. Everything smells so good. Would you like one? Normally, we'd say that if you're gonna release a sequel 52 years after a classic, at least stick to what worked best the first time, which in this case was the emphasis on Cinderella. And why do they have to keep the palace so dark? And that awful dance? And those boring colors that all look the same? However, Cinderella 3, A Twist in Time, focused on Anastasia and was actually a decent Disney sequel. On the other hand, even a fairy godmother couldn't save Dreams Come True from the overwhelmingly negative reviews it received from critics. This is all my fault. Wish fairy godmother was here. Do you agree with our list? What Disney sequel do you wish would disappear? I can't even see the real you under there. I do hope no one else does. For more entertaining top tens published every day, be sure to subscribe to WatchMojo.com.